I'm laughing because <laughs> I've already recorded this video three times. And every time I kept getting new questions and I'm like, oh, that's a good question. I <laughs> so we're gonna get this drying thing handled once and for all. So <clears throat> here's why there's a lot of confusion. The reason is because every other mushroom on the planet, you can just air dry the thing and it'll be fine. And it'll keep and it'll be good. The problem with Amanita is we are trying to hang on to the ibotenic acid and the musk mall. So there's two things we're dealing with. One is getting it dried to the point that you can store it without it going bad, and this is a huge deal. It's got to be cracker dry, and even then we've got to go through some shenanigans <laughs> to preserve it correctly and so that they don't go bad, and I'll make a video on that. And then we've got the issue of uh, converting ibotenic acid to muscimol. So I'm gonna say it here officially for good. When you dry these things with heat at a minimum of 165 degrees Fahrenheit, Sixty-eight degrees Celsius up to about 195 degrees Fahrenheit and about 74 degrees Celsius you are going to convert 30 percent of the ibotenic acid if you're lucky and all goes well okay so you have a couple of options and you're writing to me and you're saying, what do I do if I don't have a dehydrator? All right, so you're gonna have to air dry clearly. If you air dry, your goal is to get it cracker dry, not to convert ibotenic acid, okay? So if you're just air drying it, think clearly, focus. The goal here is merely to get it cracker dry and toss out anything about conversion methods and all that stuff. Be single focused on this. Focus on drying. So here's what I used last year. And this is a fantastical little beast. Got it off Amazon. It's mesh all the way through. And you can hang it. I hang mine from my shower curtain rod. It's got a little Velcro thing that opens. And then it unzips. See? And then it can collapse and you can put it under the bed or in a closet. And what you need to do with this is you can actually, every single mushroom you've harvested will fit in this thing. It's huge. I'll link to it in the description. And put it in your bathroom. The reason why is because you want to be able to control the temperature in there so that you can get this as dry as possible and the humidity. But it, you're going to need a couple of days. To do that when you get them out though most homes have 50 percent humidity did you know that that's high so you're going you're still going to need to do something and what i would do um and you know i hate the oven and we're not going to oven dry but once you've got them dry and you want to get them cracker dry then what i would do is open the door to the oven put the oven as low as you can get it and get a fan on it and set them in there but remember, this is not to use heat to convert. You, you got to get it up to that minimum 68 Celsius, 165 Fahrenheit. And that's not what we're doing here. You've already got them dry. You just need them cracker dry. So again, the heat is merely to just keep pulling moisture out of them and just keep messing with them, you know, looking at them, testing them and seeing, all right? The whole point of cracker dry and then putting those little desiccants. Where are my mushies? Where'd they go? Fountain. Yeah, so those little packets down there. I just got these out of medicine bottle, you know, like vitamin, whatevers. Anything that comes with those in them, I pull them out and put them in here. So <clears throat> the whole reason for Cracker Dry is to just preserve them because you didn't sterilize them if you air dried them. And so you're really going to need to count on being extremely careful with the procedures that I'll put in another video, which is my processing and preservation video. And I'll show you what to do to make sure they don't go bad. 
Now that is your air dry. Heat drying, this is gonna take us a minute. I will never advocate oven drying. I wish you could be in my head, seeing what I'm seeing on my computer every damn day, somebody telling me they oven dried them and it was a failure. Pictures of them burnt. Pictures of them washed out and all floppy and nasty. I would consider it an advanced technique and I still won't do it. <laughs> so oven drying is prone to failure. Please don't do it. Just go on and air dry. Buy the, the thing, air dry them. It's better than wasting these mushrooms. You need to invest in a dehydrator, especially if you're gonna be using these as medicine and you want to give them as gifts and make gifts with them and share them with others and, and use these year after year, it's worth the investment. No oven drying, dehydrators. You get what you pay for. Here's the thing, if you spend less than 100 US dollars or your equivalent, you're not going to get a good one and you're gonna have issues with it. I understand if it's all you can do now, you do what you can do. It's better than not having anything. But just know this, look out for the following things. So most cheap dehydrators are made with a heating element on the bottom and a fan and it blows hot air up and it's gonna have layers to it, right? The problem with that, and I know you think I'm being picky, but if you don't wanna get sick from ibotenic acid, then this is what, what we're doing. So the problem with that is the ones on the bottom, if you set it at the right temperature, they're gonna burn. The ones in the middle are going to get cracker dry and the ones at the top are still gonna be damp and they're not ever going to have gotten up to temperature. Most dehydrators don't go as high as what we're saying. The cheap ones will maybe, maybe go half of that, 100 maybe, Celsius, uh, 100 Fahrenheit, which I can't remember what that is, Celsius. So it's literally for slowly pulling the moisture out and the heat is merely to aid in that, not to help convert ibotenic acid. So if you get a cheap dehydrator, make sure, first of all, you're not gonna be counting on converting ibotenic acid in your dry. And secondly, at least every six hours, take the top tray, rotate it to the bottom, and then set an alarm on your phone. Another five, six, seven hours, eight hours, take the top, put it on the bottom, and just keep rotating them like that. You'll get the better result that way. You won't burn them and you won't leave some that didn't get dried, all right? So if you, if you can invest in it, I'm gonna take you down to the floor and show you that that is my dehydrator so that's let's go all right so now we're down here on the floor and this is called the excalibur and it's not cheap but with this one you're going to load it set it for 24 hours come back not only are they going to be cracker dry but you will have converted 30 percent ibotenic acid so can you see in here see that little thingamajig back there all right that is where the air comes in hits the heating unit and pulls the air and the heat out and it's situated in the very center of the back so that the heat comes over all of them evenly and then the air keeps circulating within it it's just one big box and then you just have nine shelves that you load slide them in there put the lid on turn it on come back 24 hours later it's done maybe you can get together with some other people <coughs> and go in together on it anyway that is the drying thing i'm going to link to everything in the description i'm really hoping i covered everything but if i didn't check the description to see if i've made any updates and i hope this ends the discussions as far as preservation um, drying it outside in the sun and all that. The only issue with drying outside is that it's going to be extremely humid. It's the rainy season. It may be so cold that they probably won't dry out very quickly. 
What about our, the, our ancestors and what did they do? They probably had this whole thing worked out. They probably had a whole tent, lodge, place, area set up for this and had a fire in the middle and had it really hot in there and had created a huge dehydrator. That's what I think. Um, anyway, for preserving long-term and best practices, I'm gonna make another video for that. Sorry this went so long, but this was really important. Hope I've ended all the questions. I hope that I've helped you. I'm sorry it's so confusing. I hope this helped. I love you people. You are beautiful. You're a beautiful community. Now I gotta go pack for vacation.